Thank you, Russell, and thank you all. It is so good to see you, those joining us online here in the room. Uh, good to see you. I'm Wolfgang, part of the team here, and uh, happy Eclipse weekend, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I've got a bunch of friends back east and in the Midwest who are very excited about the big eclipse tomorrow. It doesn't seem like that's been a huge deal for a lot of folks up here in the Northwest, and it could be partly because we have a word for when the sun gets blotted out in the sky. It's it's called October through June, right? I mean, that's kind of, we have that all the time. So, woohoo! Uh, get some special glasses, I guess. But uh, anyhow, uh, although the sun did make a cameo last week, some of you know it's out there awfully nice right now as well. And so, with it being so sunny out, decided I would go and take in a Mariners game. Um, always a fun experience. And so, uh, part of it is, too, to be honest with you, I'm a sucker for a bobblehead. Um, um, so I'm, I'm just a child at heart. And so uh, I was excited to go down and take in a beautiful day and get a bobblehead out of the deal and watch what was not a very good baseball game. Um, but, uh, but I forgot as I was walking up, I was reminded of part of the game day experience. You have this uh, fantastic selection of sausages and hot dogs available from street vendors. You've got 17 different identical team stores, all of which you can choose from if you'd like to buy some memorabilia. But as I was making my way toward the home plate gate, I, I heard a familiar noise that I had forgotten about from last season. It was, it was someone uh, with, with one of these. You may recognize this. Um, he was stationed there right behind the home plate uh, uh, gate, and, um, and his was actually much nicer than this one. Uh, this is sort of low grade compared to the industrial strength one that he had. And uh, if you've ever been to one of these, you know probably what I'm talking about. It's the folks that are there with the signs, with the kind of messages about God's judgment and so on. And, um, and in the time that I could hear him as I was kind of making my way up and then waiting in line to get in, I heard a lot about lakes of fire and and the wrath of God, and all this sort of thing. Um, and of course, in the time that I heard him talking, not a single person stopped to, uh, to chat, to have a conversation, certainly not even um, to respond to the call that he was putting out. Um, if there was any reaction, and there was occasionally a reaction, it was people who were yelling at him to turn it off, or turn it down, or to shut up, or other things that I probably couldn't share with you here from this stage. But uh, anyway, then I thought to myself, is this the best way? Is it working? I mean, think about this. Well, let's imagine it this way. Imagine, you, you know when you go to Costco and you uh, decide you're going to slip back for whatever, you need, you need your 96-pack of toilet paper and a rotisserie chicken, something like that, and you're making your way down the aisle, and what do you see out of the corner of your eye, but it's one of the cell phone guys or one of the, uh, one of the membership upgrade people, you know? We, with their soft-sided coolers. We gotta get one of those, right? How do you, how do you respond to that? You like that? Is that to draw you in? Find that appealing? No, you do what probably most of us do, what I certainly do. I try to avoid eye contact. I, I try to hope that they get kind of tied up and busy with someone else in that moment, or somehow they don't see me and I'm able to quietly slip by and just get left alone. And if I'm not crazy about the soft-sided coolers in Costco, why don't we add in an angry sign about judgment and somebody with a bullhorn? That'll make it better, right? That, that just woos me in. You know what I'm talking about, right? Is this working? Is this the best way to do this? I mean, is it even helping, frankly? I mean, causing, is it helping people take seriously what is a very serious issue, the issue of sin? To encounter the mind-blowing grace of Jesus, as we just remembered and celebrated last Easter and just sang about right now? Or is it, it actually hurting? Is it reinforcing this popular perception that Christianity is combative and angry and threatening and more focused on the bad news of sin than the good news of God's grace? And aside from how it comes off to those who might be outside the faith, does, does that example inspire those who are followers of Jesus to want to share their faith themselves? To see that and think, you know what? I could do that. I should do that, right? Or is it actually just making those of us who are followers of Jesus more reluctant to say anything about it? Afraid that somehow we might get painted with the same brush as Bullhorn Guy. It's interesting, there was a recent study that came out that showed almost half of Christian millennials, these are Christians, they believe it is wrong to evangelize. What they mean by that, they feel like 
this sort of combative, confrontational, shout people down, that, that that's, that's not right. Is this working? Could there be a better way? Uh, particularly in our setting, right, in the Northwest. Because we've talked about this before. A study that just was released like six weeks ago showed that of all the major metropolitan areas in the United States, Seattle is what we consider the least churched of all of those major cities. Not just the city itself, the greater metropolitan area. The stats said that almost two out of three people in our area of western Washington have not even been to a church even once in the last year. And yet, even in my experience, and maybe in yours, I've found that so many people are curious about life's big questions, what really matters, what spiritual questions even. And I'm not just talking about the people who I interact with in my role as a pastor. I'm, I'm talking about the people when I get my hair cut, or when I buy coffee, or in a restaurant, or talking with my neighbors, there are so many people who are asking those big questions of what really matters. Is there more to life than this? Now, they may not think of them as spiritual questions because of the way our culture has shifted, but they're still wrestling with significance and meaning in life. One, one study, it did show that just under 40% of people say they never have any spiritual questions. That's just not something that comes to their mind. But you know what that means? That means over 60% do. And many of you know, one of the things that we offer around here is this experience called Alpha. Alpha is designed to be a place where we can have these kinds of conversations. No bullhorns, no yelling, but just to spend time in a conversation, talking about those questions, listening to different people's perspectives, instead of jumping right in or trying to shout them down or say why what we believe is right and what you believe is wrong. There's this beautiful little verse that's tucked in one of the smallest books of the Bible at the very end, the book of Jude. It's this little verse in uh, Jude 1, because there's only one chapter, 22. Here's what it says. Be merciful to those who doubt. Be merciful. Not shame those who doubt. Not judge those who doubt. Be merciful. Be patient. One translation says, be gentle. This is a place where we can be honest about our doubts and our questions. And so to be clear, this message is not just one big advertisement for Alpha, although part of why we're doing this is to tell you about a very unique Alpha opportunity that's coming up a week from tomorrow. Very excited about it. It's also, I want to talk about this because this Alpha thing is more than just a program that we offer three times a year as a church. It's a, it's a way of life, it's a, it's a way of thinking, it's a way of interacting, it's a sort of culture piece of who we believe God's called us to be as a church. To be a church, not just have a ministry, to be a church where questions are welcome, where, where people can be honest about their doubts, where people are encouraged to be curious and to explore and to, and to listen to other people's point of view instead of just insisting on my way and the only way. Just to talk, to have a conversation. Or to put it another way, less about proclamation, although that matters, and more about conversation. Not about lecture, but about listening, about dialogue. Less about explanation, more about experience. Less about trying to feel friendly and actually being friends, connecting, relationships. We don't want to just have a program that does that. We want to be a church. We want to be people who do that. So in the time that I have today, I want to talk briefly to two major groups of people. First, to those who are asking these kinds of questions or are curious maybe about faith. And then for those who would consider themselves to be followers of Jesus. Okay? First, to those who have those kinds of questions or are curious or exploring or wrestling even. Maybe you or someone you know is here and you are not sure you believe any of this stuff. Secretly, you wonder, am I the only one in this whole big room who's not sure they buy any of this? I'm going to tell you, you're not, okay? One of my best friends here at North Shore is a guy who would tell you freely he's an atheist, but he's so drawn and curious to this culture that he comes almost every single week. So whether you consider yourself skeptical or agnostic, kind of not sure what you believe, whether you're resolved atheist to just believe there is nothing out there, or 
Maybe you'd say, I'm spiritual, but I wouldn't call myself a Christian, wherever you're at on that spectrum. Or maybe you would call yourself a Christian, but secretly, deep down, you hear what we talked about last week at Easter about a resurrected Jesus, and you're like, I'm not sure I actually believe that. Or I'm not sure that this Bible is a thing that I can actually trust. Let me just say, if any of that fits you, above all, you are welcome here, okay? This really is a safe place to bring those questions, to wrestle with those big issues. You don't have to pretend. You can be honest about that. And rather than me stand up here and deliver just one more lecture on that, I want to invite you into a conversation. I want to invite you to this next Alpha. We're kicking off a very special one one week from tomorrow on Monday, April 15th. We are hosting it actually at Watts Brewing um, in Woodenville. Uh, that's tax day, so after you're finished, come to the brewery. Um, they, have, they have this great space kind of off of their tap room, away from their bar area that's kind of a private area in the back. It's actually among these big stainless steel uh, brewing vats that they have. It's a very cool setting. And the hope is, we do this from time to time, the hope is to meet in a place that's not a church or somewhere a little bit different that'll make that a little easier to come check it out if you wouldn't be comfortable in a space like this or if a friend of yours wouldn't be comfortable in a space like this. But just come. Don't have to drink. It'll be available, a little tasting experience if people want that, but we'll have free soft drinks that people can enjoy as well. Um, Interestingly enough, a little side note, the owners there are actually followers of Jesus and some of their team are as well and they're very excited um, to host us for this series. And we did this, some of you know, we did this at a, a small wine shop that was owned by someone here at North Shore uh, a few years ago. And the response was so overwhelming that it maxed out super fast. And a lot of people weren't able to come to that because uh, we ran out of space. And so we found a larger space, um, but still it's somewhat a little limited. So if you want to be part of this, you want to invite a friend, sign up. It'll be on those Mondays for several weeks um, from 7 to 8.15 in the evening. And each Monday night, we'll have a dessert together. Um, as I said, we'll have an optional tasting for those who want to try one of their beers. And then we'll watch a short documentary or film about one of the big questions of life. The, the first one that we start with is, is there more to life than this? I don't know anybody that doesn't ask that question at one point or another. And to give you a sense for these documentary films, I want to show you a, a little two-minute teaser of what that, kind of a trailer, if you will, for those films. And you, you'll recognize a few of the faces and names, I think, that are part of this experience. So take a look at the screen for the taste of the Alpha film series. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? I had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with. Is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. Now, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. 
we are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. just gives you a feel. I mean, these things are super well produced, taught and communicated in a super compelling way. Many of it shot on location everywhere from the Middle East to here in the Pacific Northwest. And, um, and then after we watch what's usually about a 20-minute film, we then open things up for conversation in small groups. And people have a chance to share their perspective, to ask their questions. What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? What do you think about that? We just finished, actually, a course a couple of weeks ago, and during that series, I had the chance to sort of sit in as a sub for one of the table leaders who was sick one night, and um, it was a very blended table. There were a couple of Christians with questions, and there were a few folks, though, that were agnostic. They were sort of not sure what they believed about some of this, and then a couple, two people specifically, who very explicitly were atheists, and, um, and that night, specifically, we were asking the question, who is Jesus, and kind of saw the film talking about what we believe as Christians, Jesus, who we believe him to be. And then we open things up, and um, one of the guys who very, very openly said, I'm just an atheist, I'm just checking this out, um, he said, you know, I, I, you, I think Jesus is a con man, is what I think. I think he's, he's an ax, absolute um, egomaniac who was just so drawn to people's praise and celebration that he, uh, he would say anything, he would do anything just to get people's acclaim and popularity. And... Uh, for those that are wondering, I don't see Jesus that way, all right? But, but this, then this conversation began at the table, and people chiming in from different perspectives about who is Jesus, and what about miracles, and how do we process all this stuff? And can I tell you, it was just one of these amazing moments when I stepped back and said, how cool is it that I'm sitting here at a table having a thoughtful, uh, friendly conversation with someone who doesn't believe anything in a way, in many ways that I believe, but... But that we can, stay. it was. This is a place where you can bring those kinds of questions. You really are welcome, and it was a beautiful. You think that happens a lot with Bullhorn guy? He has those kinds of conversations. See, that's what's so special about Alpha. And I could tell you twenty more stories like that. As a matter of fact, some of those sixty-eight folks that were baptized last week, several of them had come through Alpha, and made that choice in light of some of the things that they discovered there. And so let me just say, if you are curious or questioning, no strings attached. I hope you'll check it out. It's totally free. Just sign up, check out the first week. If you don't like it, don't come back. But you can register at northshore.church slash alpha. And if you want to know more about that, we'll be hanging out in the lobby. I'll be there. I'd love to meet you. We'd love to have you. But let me also quickly say something to those who might consider themselves to be followers of Jesus, okay? Because I mean it when we say at North Shore, we want alpha to be more than just a program or a course that we offer a couple times a year. We want the kind of things that make Alpha so special to be true of us week in and week out, not just as a church culture, but as individual human beings. People who don't try to argue or, or bully people into faith, people who are willing to have conversations and interact with folks that may even see the world a little bit differently than they do. In fact, one study uh, done of people who uh, were atheists but said that they at least were open and beginning to explore uh, Christian truth, or the, tr the claims of Christianity, they said the biggest factor in their willingness to open up and explore faith was that they had had a positive experience or relationship with someone who was a follower of Jesus. Just simply interacting with someone who called themselves a Christian but actually lived with a kind of graciousness and compassion that we see in the heart of Jesus, that opened them to be curious to learn more about what that might mean, okay? In other words... Perhaps the single biggest thing that we can do to help people explore faith or be open to Christianity is this. Very simply, don't be a jerk, all right? Like some of you need to write this down, all right? Some people need to write, because this does not come naturally for some folks. For some people feel like being a jerk is sort of a badge of honor. That I should be picking these kind of fights and getting into these kinds of debates. You might win the argument, but you'll never win the person, right? So don't be a jerk, okay? That's sort of the baseline threshold that we're shooting for at North Shore, all right? And I think we can all do that. 
But we actually want to aim for something a little bit higher, because that's a fairly low bar, right? We don't always hit it. Fairly low bar. So what I want to do is, beyond just starting there, let's see if we can go a little further. What if we all pledge together as followers of Jesus at North Shore to live by this simple little template? I heard this from a couple of friends of mine in the Chicagoland area, Dave and John Ferguson. They wrote this little book about it. I thought it's just so memorable and just something to be a catalyst to think. It's the simple word outline uh, built around the word bless. Bless. B-L-E-S-S. Okay? First, the first B is not for bullhorn, I assure you, all right? You know what it is? It's begin with prayer. Begin with prayer. Because this is more than just a conversation about worldviews and opinions and perspectives. This is a spiritual deal that we're talking about here. There's a supernatural component that we sometimes take for granted or that we sometimes just blow past because everything, whether it's sharing our faith, whether it's living out this story, it all begins with prayer. And of course, this is one of those things that we're quick, quick to pay lip service to, but truthfully, in real practice, we sometimes overlook or ignore. I've got a friend who uh, says it this way. He said, prayer is a lot like flossing. Everyone agrees it's a good idea, but most don't do it as regularly as they pretend. You know what I'm talking about? The only time I floss is the morning of my dentist appointment, if I'm just honest with you, all right? And I know they can tell, because I'm like bleeding profusely from the mouth, you know what I'm saying? I'm more than you needed to hear, but you know what I'm talking about, right? What if prayer was more than that? More than just, oh my goodness, the dentist is gonna look. I better get ready. What if it just became a rhythm? One of the beautiful, simple ways, well, I'll tell you an idea on how we're going to do this together. But first, I want to point, it's not just, it's, it's not just uh, praying, but praying with intention. You look at what the Apostle Paul said about this in Colossians chapter 4, um, beginning in verse 2. Look at what he said. He said, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Here, we've got Paul writing this from jail because of sharing faith. Likely, friends, that's not gonna happen to you. Verse four. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should, Paul writes. And then he challenges them. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. See, as gifted and dynamic and smart as Paul was, he knew this all begins with prayer. Even Jesus, before he began his public ministry, he spent 40 days in the wilderness praying. And if that was true for Paul, and it was true for Jesus, then friends, it is true for us. And so to get real practical about this and how to invite you to begin with prayer, not just for this upcoming Alpha, but just in general, Um, that God would give us a heart like he has for people that are wrestling with these questions. I want to invite you to the next 21 days, okay, three weeks, invite you to pray with us for those who don't know Jesus but have these questions. It's a simple, the 1102 challenge. Super easy. It's kind of inspired by Luke 11.2. Luke 11.2 is uh, where Jesus... uh, um, uh, Lord's Prayer, the, collect, the, the, the account of the Lord's Prayer is there. It talks about your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what I've done for some time on my phone and what I'd invite you to do for these next three weeks, if you just set a simple alarm at 11.02 a.m., if you want to do p.m., knock yourself out, 11 a.m., 11.02 a.m., that just, in a, wherever you are, just quickly pray, God, open a door. Just like Paul was praying there in Colossians. Open a door, Lord. Pray for my friends that don't know you. Just help me. Help me to be a blessing to them. Simple, simple, simple. Who do you know that doesn't know Jesus? Begins with prayer. Doesn't rest with you, it begins with prayer. So B, begin with prayer. Gotta keep moving. L, listen. Listen. This is kind of in the jerk category, okay? But learning to listen is one of the most important pieces of having spiritual conversations. It's genuinely listening to someone else's point of view and experience. Instead of insisting on chiming in or correcting or already formulating how we're going to react, but genuinely hearing and receiving what they're saying. We've told you this before, but in the New Testament, we see Jesus is asked 183 questions. He only directly answers a handful, but Jesus actually asks 
over 300 questions in the Gospels. Jesus is a question man, not just the answer man. He asks questions. He genuinely takes interest. He draws people in through conversation and listening. Any relationship starts with listening, and it is not one of the great skills of our world and culture right now. Would you agree with me? Because everyone's so set on shouting the other person down, whether it's on social media or, uh, or on TV or in the public square. When we learn to listen, it points people toward the beauty of God's grace. I love this quote. You've heard me reference it before, but it just resonates with me. Being listened to is so close to being loved that most people can't tell the difference. To just listen. I see you. I hear you. You matter. That's so close to being loved for so many folks, it it, it just feels good. In fact, those who aren't Christians say the top quality they would look for in a person to talk about faith is someone that listens without judgment, who's just willing to hear them. It's a powerful thing. So begin with prayer. Listen. Then one of my favorites, eat. Uh, Jesus liked to eat. I'm glad about that. And you think about how often we see him at meals, often with people that people didn't think he should be associating with. You know what I'm talking about? There's something powerful about sharing a meal. It has a way of moving from acquaintances to actually becoming friends. I wonder who you eat with. It's a central part of Alpha. Normally when we uh, meet here on our campus here, we do this great dinner. We've got amazing food teams that help us. But as I said, this time we're going to be doing desserts because it's off-site, a little different setting. There's something about eating together that builds connection and relationship. Who are you eating with? So begin with prayer. Listen. Eat. And then the first S is serve. Serve. Jesus said he did not come to be served, but to serve. Didn't come demanding his rights, but he concerned about the rights of others. He modeled this for us. So as you pray for someone and you listen to someone and you spend time eating with people and you hear what's happening in their lives, you'll see opportunities to maybe come alongside, to maybe be a help, to meet a need, to give a gift. Acts of service like this, they communicate a care and interest that goes beyond words. And I don't mean with strings attached or conditional or manipulative. I mean genuinely serving and blessing other people. That's the others-focused life we're called to live, modeled by Jesus. And there, of course, are the big things that we do as a church along these lines. You just heard earlier about the Global 6K. What a simple, practical way to spread awareness about the crisis of of water purity in the world and um, the needs that go along with that. You know, we do other things through the year with the school districts, other serving opportunities. There are direct things you can do. But how do we bless our world? We begin with prayer. We listen. We eat. We serve. And then finally, you're guessing what the S might be? It's story. Finally, listening to other people's stories and sharing our own. One of my favorite stories in all of scripture, many of you are familiar with it, is that blind man that was healed by Jesus. And after he was healed, the religious leaders gathered him in to kind of confront him and grill him. Who is this Jesus? Is he a good guy or a bad guy? And this guy had no part of their theological debates. When they grilled him to say, is Jesus a sinner or not? Here's how he responded in John 9. He said, whether Jesus is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know I was blind, but now I see. You can't argue with that. I can't explain or debate all these finer points of theology and all this philosophy. I don't know. I just tell you, this guy changed my life. That's all I know. I used to be blind, now I can see. And maybe you think, I don't have a story that dramatic. Maybe. But maybe, maybe your story is this amazing peace he's given you through some struggle or challenge in your life. Or your story is... How God resurrected your marriage, which had a potential to fall apart. Maybe he helped you hold on to hope when you were tempted to give up or freed you from addiction in your life or some need that he met. You you don't have to have all the answers. It's just the simple question, what's your story? Remember what Peter said to those early Christians. He said in 1 Peter 3, he said, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do it how? How? gentleness, respect. You don't have to have all the answers. You just have to be able to tell people about the hope that you have and to do it respectfully. You don't have to be able to explain everything. That's why we do things like Alpha. You can invite someone to come with you 
Because it doesn't rest with you. It's not on your shoulders. Just invite, hey, this, uh, they're doing this beer tasting thing. And they're going to be talking about the big questions of life. It's actually put on by my church, but it's not going to be a churchy thing. It's going to be some stuff to eat and some people to meet and some little film we'll be watching. Would you ever want to come with me, check it out? Simple invitation. And those films, they're full of stories of people whose lives have been changed by God. They all point to God's bigger story. And we're seeing the difference it's making in people's lives. So you can do this. You can bless those around you. It begins by praying. Just set your reminder on your phone, 1102, remind me each day to pray. It it means listening, paying attention to the people around us, hearing them. It means eating together, um, building relationships. It means serving genuinely and then respectfully and gently sharing our story when the opportunity comes. Here's the question that I guess I just want to wrap up with. Here, does the world need more bullhorn or more blessing? Is that a hard question? I don't think so. Can you imagine if just at our church, just watching online and part of the family, if we resolve, I'm gonna, this is how I'm going to walk to my day, looking for chances to do this. Because I believe the world needs more blessing than bullhorn, friends. And I believe he's calling us to be those people of blessing. He's calling you to that. And so where are you? And not to be too direct about it, I'm a little over my time. Everyone in this room and watching online falls in one of two groups when it comes to this. Either you're someone who should come to Alpha or you're someone who should be inviting someone to Alpha. Everybody here, which are you? And we found most of the people that come, they come because they were invited by a friend. They come in the arm of a friend just to kind of get over the fear of that. Are you someone that needs to come to Alpha? Go to northshore.church slash Alpha. Check with us in the lobby. We'll get you signed up. Are you someone that needs to invite someone to Alpha? It's coming up, week from Monday. We'd love to see you there. Because we believe maybe a little less of this, a little more of that. Make a big difference. So would you pray with me? Let's ask God to help us with this because as I said, it begins with prayer. Lord, we confess there are times we get in the way, uh, times when I've been a jerk, thought I was doing the right thing, but I was actually arrogant, condescending, prideful. God, will you give us the humility to live lives of blessing, particularly in our community that so desperately needs it, this beautiful place who lives in the midst of such majestic creation but is often so unable to see the creator behind it. So Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you are a God who loves, that sees, that listens, that that serves. You invite us to be part of your story. So Father, we, we ask you to move as only you can. It's not on our shoulders. This is your work. We ask you to be a miracle worker and a way maker and to open doors. Use us, we pray. God, I thank you. I thank you for the beautiful blessing I believe you're calling us to be. Will you do it, please? Please, we offer our hearts to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you stand and we'll finish by singing together.